and hello everybody thank you for joining uh myself here on this video my name is minsk and we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the channel huzzah hooray a feather in our cap here for sure i guess ha <laughs> um if you are really pedantic you might point out that the very first video uploaded on this channel a test playthrough of Risk of Rain by myself and my friend Jonathan uh, was actually already months ago. It was like in March of 2014. I don't know if I count that as the real, like, the when the shit really started. That's just kind of like a still, like a real practice run thing that I still kind of, for posterity's sake, still have on the channel. <laughs> uh, no, I would say that today when, like, we started playing Borderlands 2, like, in June of 2014, I would say this is when the channel started, and this is when I want to like celebrate the 10th anniversary. So there we are. Huh. Um, bef before we get into the real meat of the matter, I have a couple of like housekeeping things to handle here. Changes to the channel that I want to highlight real quick, and we'll just get through those and then get to the action. So bear with me here a moment. Uh, nothing major. Well, depends on your viewpoint, I guess. I wouldn't know. No. But, like, the big one is you will notice that this channel is no longer called Minsk and Friends. Today, when this channel, is, when this video is released, uh, you will notice that the channel is now called Your Pal Minsk. Now, that's kind of the internet handle I've settled on for, oof, I don't know how many years now. At least, like, when I started, like, doing art again, and I started posting it on DeviantArt, which I don't use anymore because of the whole AI debacle thing. Uh, that's when I started using Your Pal Minsk. I may have used that already before. Like, I maybe, like, Street Fighter, that was my handle. Because I like to use the handle Minsk, but that's often taken, and I eventually I realized Your Pal Minsk is pretty good. Um... I realize that I'm not very good at the whole gaming social media thing, the whole optimization and synergy and everything. But in this case, I feel like just having the channel be the same handle I use in general makes it more connectable. And I just don't feel like Minsk and Friends describes the vibe of the channel anymore that much. So... The reason for that original name was that I foresaw that while I was the guy doing this YouTube channel and making these videos, I thought I would be, you know, playing with my friends, playing with a bunch of people. So there would be a mix of like, um, you know, videos with me, just myself, and then videos with me and another cast. So that's why I know Minsk and Friends sounded like fun. Uh... A little bit of trivia, even on top of that. Some might think that I was thinking of Super Best Friends, you know, aping on them a little bit. Maybe, because they were a channel that I loved back in the day. But the reality actually was I've always been thinking, I don't know why, because, like, it, it's not, like, my favorite show or anything. But the Garfield cartoon from the 90s, Garfield and Friends, had such a good opening to it. Like, ladies and gentlemen... Garfield and Friends. And I guess I kind of wanted the same kind of energy for my channel. So that's why I went with Minsk and Friends. You know, Minsk and Friends. But the, also the other reason was I envisioned like, you know, a channel where there would be a big mix of me playing solo and then me and my friends. Well, in actuality, it turned out that like over 90% of the videos is just me. And because I'm bad at organizing like like, you know, joint works, like what I was imagining. Uh, and, like, over the years, I'm just more comfortable doing videos by myself. Like, I'd rather would do more stuff by myself than, uh, you know, with other people. Like, I know that's probably also, again, me being bad at optimization. It's probably limiting my channel to not, like collab with people but like i i just i i more and more in life i've just over the years speaking of these 10 years i just feel more comfortable working by myself so i think the channel is better reflected if i just call it your pal minsk which is the 
internet handle I've used whenever, you know, Minsk is taken. And honestly, right now I default to it anyway, because I like the ring of it. You know, it's that one is kind of leaning on, you know, the spin off comic books that Jimmy Olsen got uh, at DC Comics. Like he was Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. And I, I think that's kind of what I was leaning on when I came up with that handle when just Minsk didn't work anymore. So, yeah. Uh, our podcast show that I do with my friend Jonathan is still going to be called the Minsk and Friends Speakeasy because that's got that old timey vibe to it that like I'm trying to like infuse because it's supposed to have the vibes of like just a couple of guys chatting at a you know old timey bar and I just like the cadence of it so so that's not changing at all but uh, the channel name itself will no longer be Minsk and Friends as of today. Uh, you don't have to worry, like, that's not going to affect the content. Like, it's just my, my, I like it more like that. You know, Stop Skeletons from Fighting is a really good YouTube channel uh, about video games, like, you know, kind of video game analysis. It used to be called The Happy Video Game Nerd as a kind of a riff on the, well, the angry video game nerd, obviously. And I remember one day uh, the, the channel, you know, the nerd, he was like, from now on, my channel is going to be called Stop Skeletons from Fighting, and I can do that because I want to. And I'm kind of at the same, same, you know, sitch here. So, yeah. Uh, other change happening to the channel, I think I will be dropping the Let's Play part from my video titles. That's a bit of a relic, a bit of a dinosaur from the past. And, you know, I am a dinosaur. I'm so old-fashioned in everything I do. So, like, in some sense, that's part of my image as well, to be, like, this, like, guy still pretending that it's 2008 when I'm making these videos, I guess. But I think, I, th I think at this point the Let's Play moniker is a little unnecessary. Like, everyone knows what a Let's Play is. I don't think I need it to be in the title, so... Uh, from from this moment onwards, we're going to be, like, just having its uh, video game name and episode number and episode title. We don't need the Let's Play there anymore, so whatever. I'm not going to be fixing all my videos that have it still there. Let, let's just leave that as yet another quaint relic of how things used to be and how this channel worked back in the day. But, uh, yeah. Okay, that was all of the, uh, you know, bookkeeping to be done. So let's get to the celebratory occasion here. I don't have a champagne bottled pop, but I have this water bottle here that I'll squeeze open. Hold on, here's some ASMR. Come on. Ta-da. Hmm. There we go. So hooray. Ten years of this freaking channel. Hmm. Let's do a bit of reminiscing, everybody. Uh, so I, this actually comes really hard to me because I am a prototypical Finnish person in that self-congratulation does not come naturally to me. I, uh, I default to being rather humble um, whenever possible, like, <laughs> and and I don't do me like not like fake humble, like oh I'm just fishing for like you know, compliments. Like, I seriously, like, I don't, I, like, what am I doing talking, like, talking myself up here? I don't know. But let's, let's freaking try. Uh, you know, because I have to say, like, 10 years of doing, like, a project consistently as I have this channel, that's very unusual for me. And I definitely do feel like I should be celebrating this. I, it feels weird because it feels like just, you know, just another year of the show. But, like, I, uh, yeah, it's, it's a round number and I should really appreciate it. I, uh, I've always had a problem with committing to a project. That's why this is kind of a big deal for me. Like, I, mm, when I was, like, a little kid, I already wanted to draw comic books, right? Like, like I would draw, up like, a bunch of comics or whatever. And then later on, I would, like, like, like try to write stuff. I would, like, write fan fiction or maybe even original fiction. You know, I, I, I try all sorts of fun things to try to do. And I just had this horrible habit of just never committing to it. Like, I would just give up on the comic book. I'd come up with a new fun idea for a comic, and the last one started to, like, not feel great. And, uh, you know, I just kind of, like, gave up. And another, like, bad habit that I had was, like, I always was like, I'll do it someday, you know. When I'm older and wiser, I will do it. 
like I like very long into my 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 uh, youth I kept thinking like you know I can't do something cool now because I'm just you know a kid one day I'll do something big you know the example that I can point to that like really like highlights how stupid this thinking was was um you know when I was a young teen I uh you know, Newgrounds was the big thing, you know, we're talking, you know, early to mid aughts. And, you know, I watched a lot of Flash videos on Newgrounds. And I remember thinking like, you know, oh, I would love to do some like Flash videos of my own someday. <laughs> That's not happening today anymore. <laughs> but like, you know, I was like, I can't, I don't know how to. I, I'll someday when I'm older, I will, you know, have learned how to do Flash videos. And I will like also do these. As if like magically when I turn old, I would somehow have you know, put in the work to learn it, you know, ignoring the fact that I could have just started learning right away. And in particular, like, you know, the big names, one of the big ones, of course, was Ego Raptor or Aaron Hansen, who you may know from Game Grumps. Like, a decade before Game Grumps, uh, uh, Mr. Hansen was, like, a voice actor in a bunch of, like, popular... Newgrounds videos and then he started his own you know later on he did the awesome series of course and I you know he, he had a like he was like a very you know he had a deep voice already to then like a really impressive voice so in my mind he was like some you know guy well in his 20s and I was like yeah when I'm in my 20s I'll be like Igor Raptor and I'll like be doing something cool like this well Igor Raptor is only two years older than me so when I was watching those videos as like a 13 or like 15 year old guy, you know, he was, he was 15 to 17 years old. Like he, there wasn't like a crazy difference. Like, you know, that, that like, like in, in my later years, when I realized that, that like really put it to perspective, like how I was kind of, you know, I was kind of, you know, um, how do I put it? Like not, not, not applying myself as well as I could. And it's something I still struggle to with, with this day. Like, let's not pretend, like, just because I'm older and wiser, like, I've gotten over this bugbear. I, I really haven't. Like, unfortunately, it is uh, rough. But, uh, so, uh, 2014, I, like, really was in a spot where I was like, I gotta do something now. Like, that's when I was waking up to these issues. And, I, I, and I, there was a project I had been working on earlier and it was a project that once again had crashed and burned. Like, I I don't really want to go into it. Like, uh, it's not not the greatest memories. I was doing a writing project from uh, 20... Well, actually, I was doing a writing project that I finished from 2011 to 2012. And that was for me alone. That was a personal project. After all this reflecting, I was like, I got to do something that I'm happy with myself, you know? So I did that. Like, I did this writing project and I succeeded in it. And then I started a more ambitious one in 2012, and I was like, I'm going to do this, and again, I'm just going to do this for myself, so no, like, what I did as a kid, just, like, uploading work in progress online, hunting for, you know, validation like that. I'm like, I'm going to do something that I'm happy with, and maybe if once this thing's complete, if it's good, then I'll put it online. Like, just boom, to have, like, a complete work done at that point. And I did pretty good until 2013, when the motivation just crashed and burned and I like felt really bad as like weeks turned into months and I didn't continue and like I just kind of felt like shit and eventually I like yeah I, like I haven't worked on that anymore and like now I look at it and it's like not good <laughs> so like it's <laughs> yeah um but like definitely in 2014 after this I was like no I gotta do something into interim because I don't want to be trapped in this anymore where I'm not doing something I gotta come up with something new and uh you know let's plays I had been an early adopter um like really early YouTube in 2008 and 9, I was already watching YouTube videos uh, about video games. And then like Let's Plays started to be a thing there. I wasn't in something awful, so I never got into like the text-based ones. I, I like, like I knew those were a thing, but I like didn't like follow those. But the, the YouTube format I adopted really early, like... H.C. Bailey was the one I always watched. Like, go back to 2008, everybody, mentally. 
Uh, it wasn't like today where every video game gets like series from somebody on YouTube. It, YouTube itself was still rather limited and there were not videos for like every video game. So H.C. Bailey was doing Final Fantasy videos, always been a lover of Final Fantasy, and it felt like really great to follow like a really smart guy who was really passionate about Final Fantasy, make like these really good videos. And like I remember the final hype when... Or, or the hype when he finally started doing Final Fantasy VII. There had been, again, there really wasn't any videos about Final Fantasy VII. Not like these in-depth playthroughs on YouTube at the time. So when he finally started doing those, it was a huge deal. So, you know, I had the idea in my head that, uh, you know, someday I could do these Let's Play videos too, I bet. I could talk over videos, you know, I could talk about video games and stuff. And thankfully in 2014, I actually did do it. Like, 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 that's when I finally was like, no, 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 not this, like, I'll someday. I'm doing this right now. And uh, that's basically how the channel got started. Like, um, I had already, like, you know, I had already had, like, a lot of bantering with friends. Like, uh, I already as a kid, like, way earlier, like, it was a social event for, to play single-player games with my friends. It, it wasn't like we always sat down and played multiplayer games. We would sit and play Final Fantasies and, like, other, like, single-player games and just, you know, chat over those. So, it, like, to me, Let's Plays always felt perfectly natural. You know, there's, oh, it, it's still to this day people are like, what's the point of, like, watching someone play a video game instead of playing it yourself. Like, like the, what's the point of this commentary? But no, it, to me, it just was like a natural extension of the, like, hanging out with your friends and, like, talking over a you know, video game that one of you is playing. Like, it, it just, like, made sense to me. So, of course, it made sense that I'd do this myself someday. And, you know, my, my friend T Jonathan was there to help me out at the beginning. I was a little worried to do this at first. That's why the first few videos... Uh, are with the two of us working together. Uh, unfortunately, Jonathan had to leave the country for a couple of years, like, just as we were starting this thing. Like, uh, so that kind of put a damper on making videos together. Of course, nowadays, with the remote recording capabilities, it wouldn't be that big of a hamper. Maybe a bit of latency having to, you know, record across a continent. But, uh, you know, back then, you know, it kind of forced me to then do the solo videos. And really, that was honestly a pretty... Pretty good, like, uh, pretty good, like, you know, like, you know, it was unfortunate, you know, not seeing my friend for a couple of years, you know, at that point, and, you know, not being able to do this project, but, like, forcing me to, like, then do the solo work that I was a little worried about starting, you know, and then it turned out it was perfectly natural for me, and that's how I like to do videos, so everything worked out in the end, end really well, and, you know, here we are, you know, ten years later, and uh, I'm really happy with my body of work, like, some of the like play th some of the playthroughs it's like up and down like you know cuz I, I i originally i played a lot of games that i've already beaten and you know kind of like you know give the more analytic like look on games that i'm at least somewhat familiar with and i then i've later just done more and more blind playthroughs to give first impressions and uh mm, you know how do i put it like you know, I'm, I'm like just kind of banking on like, you know, here's an interesting game. I hope it's good. And sometimes they aren't the best. Like I, I keep a positive attitude, but like, you know, in hindsight, not every series is as good as the others. But then when I land on like a real gold mine, like I feel like uh, some of the work I've done has been really good in terms of like the critical eye on video games. And in just in entertainment purposes, like the like kind of sources of fun I've found in video games that I didn't maybe expect to, you know, even, like, hit as hard as they did. Um, it's been it's been really good, and uh, I'm really happy that I've been able to do it. Again, my big sad story there, I didn't mean it to be so sad, but, like, you know, I, I you know, I'm trying to be introspective here, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, like, in light of all of that, that I've been able to, like, have such a good time making all these videos for all you lovely folks who have stuck around here for... However long you may have, whether you're watching, you know, this this year for the first time or you've been for like 10 years even when I was babbling over Valkyria Chronicles. Uh, yeah, you know, I, it, 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 uh, it's, it's been my uh, pleasure to be able to give a, a perspective on video games that has resonated with you folks. So I'm... Uh, 
proud and humbled, I guess, at the same time. And I uh, am really, really, really just uh, pretty happy to be here right now. Still. Still doing this. Whew, oh god, god, this is getting so sappy. I'm so sorry, I'm a mess. <laughs> but let's get to the meat and potatoes of today's video that I wanted to do to celebrate the occasion. And I was thinking, since I'm such a, like, I just don't know, I, I, I don't even know what is, like, the, like, trendy or, like, smart or, like, big move thing to do to, like, entertain people. I'm just like, well, what, what could I do that's, like, you know, make a video out of it? And I had this eureka moment of, what if I just did, like, a best of clip show kind of thing. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> I, 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 this is so silly. I don't know. This might be so bad because I know that clip shows are usually like, um, uh, kind of people are like, Ugh, when those come on TV. But, um, I wanted to, this also kind of be like a director's commentary because I want to like look back on my own channel. You know, I'm the director here talking back on some of these like moments. So what I wanted to do was like, uh, go through, uh, every year from 2014 to 2023 and pick like one moment that I wanted to highlight. I don't know if it's my favorite moment or like the best moment or whatever, but it's just like something that I looked at the like list and I was like, oh yeah, that happened that time. So let's, let's take a look at that. <laughs> so um, I hope this is going to be fun. I, I, I hope uh, you folks at home get something out of this. Uh, let's, let's, let's freaking get on with it, shall we? So let's, Let's take the time tunnel back to 2014. And what's on the first docket on 2014? It has to be Sleeping Dogs. That was the first full playthrough that I recorded, uh, like, you know, to completion. And it was uh, also the um, first uh, series that I recorded by myself. Right, yeah. We recorded, me and Jonathan, we recorded the, like, Risk of Rain test recording then we did the few episodes of borderlands 2 and then jonathan had to had to uh am scray for a couple of years and then i was like well sleeping dogs because i had just played it a couple of years ago at that point and i remember it being like really fun it was really diverse with its content and uh and uh, I, I knew that, like, I could, like, have, like, a really good, like, selection of stuff to talk about while playing it. So it was a natural choice. And, and like, I had a really good time. And the first, like, thing, the first of these ten memories I wanted to highlight here. <laughs> uh, I wanted to, you know, I you know again, being, a, like, a Finnish person, you know, can't be self-congratulatory at all. Gotta be, like, all humble and self self uh, defacing what whatever like i got to pull up a moment like one of my funniest screw ups this is the uh, mission where you have to retrieve an informant called naz from a uh, a rival gang and you're supposed to like put him in the trunk of a car and then make an escape out of there and if you watch this clip right here uh i was like completely running on like instincts not thinking what i'm doing i shot a car's tires out and then shot for a while and then when i uh then when i when the prompt came to stick naz in the trunk of a car i just picked that car that i just shot the tires out of so let's have a look how that goes oh there's an exploding barrel how useful better stay away from that burning car it might pop ha i get i get tire shot points for shooting a car that's parking you know naz you, uh, you don't seem to have very much uh, respect among your guys if uh, they shoot so casually at me. But, um, yeah, that's right, I kicked your car. I'm gonna bust their car while I'm on the job. I just grabbed the car whose wheels I shot, didn't I? Um, I did not think this plan through. Oh. Okay, we just need to get out of it. <laughs> oh my god, this is... How could I mess up a plan this bad? Okay, just stay cool and... Keep the 18k off us for a second. We're almost out of their territory. 
Yeah, let me do a freaking jump on my busted up car. Oh, bother. Uh, I still wish that would have worked. Well, we got the speed we needed to get some distance. Drifto, drifto! This is no time for drift racing. So, a uh, minor moment in the grand scheme of things, but it all worked out. You can see that I managed to escape the bad guy gang with the car with the busted out tires. Uh, I just think it's a fun little, like, um, example of the uh, kind of, like, you know, they talk about emergent gameplay, but I feel like when you're recording a playthrough like this, you have like emergent comedy. I don't know, like like just emergent situation. It's the same way, like, like, like you know, I, this was a game that I've played through at this point, and I was like re-recording, like it was not blind, and I had like kind of an idea of like what I would talk about and like how I'd go through things. But then like, you know, a curveball is tossed at you when your brain just fries for a second and you steal a car that has its tires blown out by yourself like five seconds ago. And uh, like when I think back on my Sleeping Dogs playthrough, this is, you know, this actually sticks out among a lot of the like, you know, the more like intended sequences and like, you know, some of the like, I remember I kept doing like really bad gags for like the like kill the environmental kills in this game because uh, sleeping dogs you could like use things in the environment to, like take guys out and I just come out with really bad gags but this one like this this little this unintended like bad gag of me dicking around in this car uh, was like that was really good that was really funny funny I, I <laughs> it, it clicked for me um, yeah. So, but yeah, I had to celebrate Sleeping Dogs here as the first playthrough, the first good time. Oh, but freaking first couple of years, my microphone was pretty bad. So you can tell that in that clip and in this next clip. So I do apologize for that. But uh, it's charmingly old fashioned. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's go to 2015 now. Uh, look at a game that I started in 2014 and that was still going on in 2015. And I think really was a tone setter. It was the first big RPG, I think. Mm, I'm not sure if it counts as an RPG because this might just be turn-based tactics. It's I've never found the like balance between tactical RPGs and turn-based tactics, where exactly the like difference goes there. But uh I, uh, I, like, so I, I would play a lot of Japanese games and a lot of RPGs, and Valkyria Chronicles was the first of those, of course. It was a big deal, and it was a huge series when I played it back in the day. By the way, freaking early days, my videos at first were only 15 minutes long, and then they upgraded to 20 minutes long, and that just seems quaint nowadays, where, like, you know, I, I, I plan to make, like, two 30-minute episodes per week, but then it often, like, just, like, I have to go long because the situation just calls for it. So the idea that I could, like, play a, a game in 15-minute chunks nowadays is just laughable. But yeah, Valkyria Chronicles, like, came out on the PC in, like, 2014, and um, I, I jumped in on that. By the way, like, also a little, like, time machine on what the gaming space was back in the day. There were not that many PC ports yet at the time. So Valkyria Chronicles getting a PC port really did feel like something back in that day. Like, it was like, whoa! Like, this, this like, Japanese game getting, like, a PC rep? And that's amazing. Like, when I say, like, PC ports, uh, I especially mean that Japan had not yet really woken up on making PC ports of their games. There were a lot, but they were, like, really, like, cheaply, poorly done ones. Like, I played Dark Souls PC port back then, and, like, you know, the mouse cursor was on the screen all the time as a default. It's, like, how clunky it was. But Valkyria Chronicles somehow, because that was a kind of a niche game from, like, 2008, I think. Uh, it, like, getting a revi revitalization on the PC was like, whoa, wait, what? Okay. And then the floodgates would open up years later, and now, you know, it's pretty industry standard to, to expect PC ports. But this was like a really, I had to jump on that back then. And um, 
This was when I said about like emergent stuff. I think this one was one of the best on that front since you lead a team of, um, you know, uh, you lead an army of units where everybody's got a name and a bit of a personality, but outside of the main characters, most of them don't really get anything. So I remember fondly like how I would latch on and like create my own like kind of ideas of what these characters were like and like they gotta you know the the whenever you read like before let's plays there were after action reports was the format you know like you know like how personalities would develop among the like anonymous characters just look at uh, you know Yogg's casts Lewis and Ben save the world their XCOM games and what like what crazy characters would, like, come out as, like, really famous there. And that happened with me in Valkyria Chronicles, and I think that was really important for, like, also, like, for, like, where my channel would go and, like, me, like, trying to, like, really get into it and, like, create something out of the story here. I feel like I could be a little bit better on it these days, honestly. Um, although I haven't played a lot of games with, like, you know, not, like, super well-defined characters, but anyway. Um, so... I know my favorite character in this game was Nadine, the engineer. Uh, she was, uh, you know, the, the motto I gave was that she gets shit done because she just engineered everything. And, like, whenever she was in a mission, like, she seemed to get, like, things done the best. But the one I wanted to highlight today was my close second favorite character because this, like, an early example of what kind of character archetype I like, apparently, uh... The delightful Nancy Dufour, who was the bubbly scout who um, went on a big solo mission during uh, about the halfway point, the big cave mission, and she cleaned house on the enemy. So let's take a look at that, uh, how that went. Hmm. Let's get Nancy in Just, there. Um, leave it to me. Let's get some advanced scouting done with uh, this fancy trolley here. This is our one use of this trolley use, but I think it's a good idea to have a scout move in and flank them. Please keep up formation as you flank them. Because you, as you can see, yeah, yeah, well, I'll try. You can see, we have here this bush I can run into. I'll just have a little peek. Avoid hasty action at all costs. No, my, um, points aren't going to last to climb up there. But uh, maybe no enemies will come here? Ooh, Nancy, you crazy girl. Time your shots carefully. Being risky. And now let's just um leave it to me. Let's get a look what to expect over Can here. Those are both snipers. Enemy spotted? And there's a lancer guarding the bridge. Of course there is. Like what? Ooh boy, that's a uh, light tank. I should I should sneak a lancer back here, shouldn't I? Yes, I should. Yippee! But first I need to take up these snipers. You know. You know. So, um... Just, um, leave it to me. Um, okay. Oopsie, I dropped my bullets. Oh, <laughs> again! Enemy spotted? Now who did we spot? Whoa, that's a lot of Lancers! This is not gonna be an easy op. But it's the snipers I gotta deal with. Hopefully there aren't any more of them than these two. <laughs> Yippee! You're doing well. I mean, there could potentially be back here. Enemy spotted? Die! Ooh, Oswald the Iron! Oh no, it's his boss, Scout. Totally got it. Let's go, Oswald! Your iron versus my hat. Let's see who wins. Oh dear, all five shots need to <laughs> Whoa! Nancy! Yippee! Freaking Ooh, yeah! Boss fight won! Okay! <laughs> so let's test this demolition boost on, uh, freaking Nancy! This is an order! Destroying the target is your top priority! You know, when I, when I saw Nancy's hat, I knew this uh, lady was, uh... The true killing machine we all needed. And it's basically like Enemy it's like Rambo's headband, basically to wear that amazing blue beret. So let's see if she can really pull this off. Two shots. 
She needs two shots of the radiator after getting a demolition boost to take this thing down. Oh my god. Well, Nancy, show us your things. Uh, show, show us your moves. Fuck uh, up. <laughs> oh, dude. That's just a like, yippee! <laughs> this is my war. Yeah, Nancy's just gonna perch up here like, that's right, boys. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I took her for the stealth mission. I did not realize she would be... Oh, dude. So, there you go, freaking Nancy. The surprise badass of my army. Like, she, uh... <laughs> she was supposed to just go on a mission to, like, scout out to, like, see what enemies were, uh ahead of our main force, and she ended up, like, taking down two snipers, uh, one named enemy commander, and an enemy light tank, with a little help from our General Welkin there. Uh, the Oswald the Iron Kill in particular was incredibly clutch, because if you're not familiar with um, Valkyria Chronicles mechanics, like... Uh, Enemy enemy scouts and shock troopers are allowed to counterattack if they survive the uh, you know attack. So if Nancy had not landed every single shot on Oswald's head and killed him, Oswald would have retaliated and probably killed Nancy. But we know he didn't know who he was messing with. Uh, yeah, no, it's just that's just that's kind of the bread and butter of these kinds of like you know large cast but like not super well defined is a little these again these emergent moments of like oh yeah you know this is what happened in my playthrough that's why we make like these let's plays right it's like kind of you know i mean there's a lot of reasons to make let's plays but one is to like record like these kinds of you know um really like specific to your own experience with the game moments and nancy was the perfect one she became she was already like, I was kind of like, because her design was fun and her hat was cool. But when this happened, she became like, you know, one of the top tier badasses of my uh, army. And that's, you know, that's what I love. I love the character archetype of the like, kind of really cute and goofy character. Like you saw her like clumsy thing uh, proc during that mission. But, you know, the super like kind of harmless, cute character who's actually an absolute toughest nailed badass is very fun. Um I know later in the like playthrough, I remember that Nancy would often survive like while hiding behind sandbags. She would survive like mortar bombardment from enemy tanks, which like obliterated the sandbags. But she would like get up like completely fine. And uh, admittedly, like people who have played the game more informed me that that was actually her scout's evasion trait procking like basically she just avoided the shot and you know it just wasn't you know animated that well in the game but in my mind uh, I, I just you know my brain imagined her just eating a shell and like you know a shell from a tank and taking like like you know scratch damage from that and I was just like what the what are they feeding on her on, on this farm that she's from? This is insane. This 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 lady is impossible. Years later, when I played Fallout 4, I don't know why, but like maybe because I was looking at the list of names that uh, is it Cogsworth is your robot can say, and I saw that Nancy is one of the names that he can say. Um, you know, I decided to cosplay as Nancy when my Fallout 4 playthrough, like some kind of weird alternate, like, you know, this is what Nancy did after Valkyria Chronicles is she somehow ended up in Fallout and became a mom. <laughs> and like, I got a pretty good cosplay with her at the end when I, it's just some tips here, everybody. You can find the glasses, obviously. You can get the military cap, I believe it's called, or officer's cap. It's like a nice beret kind of close to um close to Nancy's beret and then it I don't remember the name of the armor but it's when you do the like fortress mission for the minutemen inside the fortress you take over there's like this suit of like blue not power armor but like blue combat armor with like a nice coat to it which really looks like something that like character from Valkyria Chronicles might wear like a high ranking 
uh, officer. So like it, like I had this perfect Nancy cosplay going on in Fallout Four. I was really, really pleased with myself with when I when I created her in that. Yeah, enduring legacy of a character who you know isn't exactly the most famous character in the world, but yeah. Okay, that was 2015. In 2016, I um I did struggle a little bit with finding like a favorite moment to call out. There was you know fun fun stuff going on that year, but uh, like a singular moment that I had to pin down to highlight. I struggled a little bit, but I think I have to bring up in 2016 when um I guess you could say my voice acting career started. Now. Guilty as charged, I suppose there's no reason trying to downplay it. Of course, I'm very interested in voice acting. Like, when I was a teenager, I started, you know, already, like, paying attention to, like, the voice actors and, like, who would, like, appear in multiple roles and stuff. Like, whoa, that's interesting. Actually, no, I can mention what the first time I was ever, like, interested in voice acting was. And that was, I was a fairly young kid in the 90s. Uh, and the incredible cartoon, Cow and Chicken, I say incredible in quotation marks. It was an interesting cartoon. <laughs> um, Charlie Adler voiced all three of the main characters in that show. Um, Cow, Chicken, which, by the way, are brother and sister. So Charlie Adler was two doing, like, you know, two... Two, two different genders, and the red guy, who was the bad guy in that show. Like Charlie Adler voiced all three of them, and I just remember noticing that in the credits, and I was like, oh, oh my goodness, wow, what? One guy did all three of those characters who really don't sound similar, if you ever look up that show. And then I remember, like, Cartoon Network ran once a promo where they, like, showed Charlie Adler, and they showed him in, like, the, you know, recording booth, like, doing the, like, voices for the characters. And I remember just thinking, like, little tiny, you know, grade school Minsk was like, that looks awesome. So that must be probably where my, like, voice acting interest started. And, you know, I, you know, can't deny I, it would have been nice in some some lifetime to actually be a voice actor myself. I don't know if I have the chop slash the opportunity, so I haven't really put time into it. But you could say that when I started to play games with um, non-voiced dialogue, I, like, I was a little unsure at first, like, how is this going to land? Because I've heard that there's a contingent of viewers who don't like when dialogue is read aloud by the you know, person playing the the Let's Player. Um, but, you know, and I'm not catering to those. So I decided to, like, you know, I'm going to do freaking voices for characters in games where there is no voice acting. Uh, technically, the first one of that kind, I believe, was Shantae, Risky's Revenge. I did the voices there. You know, I had a good time. I, I thought I came up with some fun, you know, goofy voices for some of the characters there. Um, but, like, there wasn't, like, any singular one I wanted to really highlight there. Like, nothing really came to my mind. But then I did the RPG by Z-Boyd Games, Cthulhu Saves the World, where um, the titular Cthulhu, you know, the famous eldritch god of H.P. Lovecraft's stories, uh, his powers get sucked and he has to become a hero to save the world to regain his powers and destroy the world. It's a very comedic uh it's a very comedic um, RPG. And there I made the very interesting choice of, you know, like this very evil guy throughout this game. And, you know, I had to do like a very evil voice for him. Like, what, what would Cthulhu sound like if shrunk down to a person, you know, adventuring as a regular sword swinging adventure? I, you know, I went with this kind of voice for him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think that was like my first, like, really like, okay, let's get into it. Although I rem I listened to this and I was like, hmm, remembered it being better back in the day, but my voice acting wasn't super, apparently. I was, I was not satisfied personally, but I still think it's worth highlighting some of these lines. And I also wish I did the transition better. So spoilers for the uh, close to the end of Cthulhu Saves the World, but once Cthulhu does get his powers back, you know, he becomes a hero... There's a fake out where he destroys the world, but then actually we have an ending where he decides to actually be a good guy. And I decided on the spur of the moment to like switch from, you know, the evil voice to a heroic voice. And I just did, I, I kind of came up with it on a spot because it was a blind playthrough. I didn't know what was going to happen in the story. So I kind of just, you know, you know, I did. I just kind of in the midline switch to it. I if 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 I had known about it, if I had prep time, I 
maybe would have tried to like make it you know more stretched out the change or something i don't know but listen to me and tell me what you guys think a brave and mysterious stranger has appeared from high atop yonder cliff using a strange holy power the mysterious stranger has sealed away cthulhu's horrible power his power drained cthulhu washes up on the neighboring shore defeated and dejected Gah! After waiting all this time to have victory snatched from my grasp by a mere mysterious man is highly frustrating. I must get my powers back, but how? Luckily for the world, Cthulhu didn't know the one and only way to break the curse and regain his powers. In order to break the curse and regain his powers, he would have to do the unthinkable. He would have to become a true hero. Only by becoming a true hero would his powers return to him. <laughs> Foolish narrator! While you were busy explaining the situation to the player, I was eavesdropping! Now, I do know the way to regain my power. Whoops. Die, foul slime monsters! As Cthulhu defeated the final slime monsters, he turned his gaze to the maiden that he had rescued. Gorgeous! Oh, it, that wasn't quite... What? When Umi gazed upon the mighty Cthulhu, she did not see a crazed octopus dragon man. Instead, she saw this. <laughs> Warning! Image displayed may not reflect reality. Oh, are we gonna get a... Immediately a uh, love-struck fangirl. My hero! Hero indeed! Did you hear that? Do I count as a true hero yet? No. Well! Let's find out what really happened then. Yes, I am a true hero. I could reclaim my forbidden power and destroy the world, but I choose not to. My adventures have taught me the power of love, friendship, and heroism. Yeah. I love you, Cthulhu. I love you too. Yeah. So there you go. Some of my early attempts at uh bringing the characters in these video games alive through my own attempts at voice acting. <laughs> I, uh, hmm. Yeah, I, this is, this watching this again, I like, hmm, I wish I could do a second pass on some of these recordings. Like, I think I could do better these days. I don't know if I've actually gotten better at voice acting, honestly, because like, I haven't done any formal training ever. I would completely just by my own ear. Just tried to like <laughs> figure out how to how to do voices and stuff. So I don't know. Like, I, would I do it better these days? Like, I, I really have no idea. Like, th th does it sound just as amateurish as these first few recordings? I don't know. I suppose you can only be the real judge. I'm too um, too uh, in it myself to be able to comment. Although, you no, know, just thinking back now, I'm like, you know, if I. If I had to voice Cthulhu, I believe I would go for something a little more like this as the voice, yes. I don't know, that maybe sounds exactly like the voice I just did there in those recordings, like back in 2016. <laughs> but uh, you be the judge. Although, if I can be really quick to like call out, like, hmm... Let's 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 move on from like lambasting myself. Uh, wow, the writing in Cthulhu Saves the World was a little spottier than I remember. I remember like like Z Boyd Games is a really funny company and like they have really funny stories in general. But like some of the like dialogue was a little clunky there. Like they used the word power three times in two sentences back to back at one point. That's a little. Ugh. I'm surprised that went through like the like uh, final draft. Like no one was like, can we like maybe put a synonym here or something? Nah, well, it comes to mind. But uh, yeah, um, that was you know that was that was that was the beginning of that, I suppose. Uh, let's uh, move on to 2017, shall we? And I picked a really stupid moment from here. Like I don't know. Like I, I looked at the year and. There was a couple of options there as well of what to look, look back on, but I wanted to highlight this is so silly. Uh, 2017, of course, 
having nothing to do with um, the channel here. 2017 was the 100th anniversary of my home country of Finland as an independent nation. So I've never, uh, you know, shied away from admitting that I am from Finland. I, um, you know, I don't try to, like, make it a huge part of my identity because, you know, I, I want to be kind of, you know, accessible to anybody, you know. Anybody in, in the English-speaking world could, like, drop in and watch my videos, I you know. That's also when I, like, also try to, like, explain, like, concepts that come up in, like, stories that might be a little bit regional, if, if I have any knowledge about it. Like, you know, when I'm playing, like, some Japan stuff, and I'm like, okay, maybe I can, maybe I know what's going on here. Like, I can, like, elucidate for somebody less familiar, you know. And Finland is another thing. Of course, you know, Northern Journey recently on this channel is a clear example of, like, when that doesn't happen because... Being a game set in the Nordics, I'm just constantly babbling about my experiences around here. But that's an outlier. Otherwise, I don't, like, bring it up, up too much. But I do, like, you know, when it comes up, I do admit my connection to the lovely, lovely snowy country of Finland up, up, up there in the north of the Europe. So, with that in mind, I did want to celebrate... The, uh, independence, the big 100 in 2017 on on my channel in some way. And I made two videos about the subject. One was for international audiences and one was for Finnish audiences. Uh, the, the international audience was me playing Crusader Kings 2, playing like Finland there. And I was thinking like, I gotta play something involving Finland so that I can talk about the country while, you know, entertaining, you know, viewers out there, and I, I settled on Crusader Kings 2 was the one that I ended up doing, uh, because, um, you know, I, I thought it'd be, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, uh, I thought that'd be like a nice, nice, simple, simple game to, um, you know, approach. We want to get really, really like, you know, trivia here. I did float a couple of World War II games, since uh, my country does have history with that. Uh, no matter how I tried to spin it, it, it just came off as a little bit jingoistic, and I, mm, I don't personally really want to mythologize recent wars anyway. Like I've, I've come more and more uh, against that thought. Admittedly, in 2017, I was still a little bit more like you know, like neutral on the subject, but like uh, I don't know. N nowadays, like I, I, I feel a little bit, you know less great about that. So I didn't do any World War II games after all. I decided that's not, that that's just not my channel vibe at all. But Crusader Kings 2 being like an old-timey, you know, you know, ancient history adventure seemed like a fun a little romp. I, I, I bet I could, if I, right, if I had to do the job again, I could think of like an even better, like just something having to do with Finland that is just like a good, good, the old-time vibes. Um, I know there's like this really famous long-running roguelike set in Finland, like, I probably would play that nowadays. But, okay, this is a long preamble. This is not what I wanted to actually talk about. It's I wanted to talk about the other video, which was for the Finnish audience, which it was me, the, pretty much the only time I've ever done a, an extended video in Finnish. Uh, you know, it was a treat for the locals only. That's why I made two videos, so that, you know, international fans could also celebrate the occasion. But I wanted to have something just for the Finnish audience. And now I am going to subject you, the English-speaking audience, to that video real quickly. So the video was me playing through three video games made by Finnish developers and commenting on them. So here you're going to hear me talk a little bit about uh, Max Payne. And you're also going to see me talk about Oceanhorn, a nice little indie Zelda-like that came out like a few years ago, just so you can actually hear me do a little bit of voice acting in Finnish, where I voice the character of Hermit at the start of the game. So check this shit out. Yeah, no niin, mihin me jäätiin? Joo. Eli minä koin, että paras mitä minä voin tehdä juhlistaakseni satavuotista Suomen taivalta näin Let's Play-kanavana on tietysti tutustua suomalaiseen pelihistoriaan, mitä, mitä me tänään tehdään, on, että me katsotaan kolme minulle merkittävää suomalaista peliä. Mä oon varannut tunni aikaa, eli pelataan sille about 20 minuuttia jokasta näistä, ja 
pohdiskellaan vähän Suomen pelihistoriaa. Ja aloitetaan toki tästä isosta nakista. Vuoden 2001 Remedy Entertainmentin klassikko Max Payne. Eli näin tuttavallisesti suomeksi makesärky. En mä kyllä tiedä, että kukaan muu paitsi minä sanoisin sitä makesäryksi, mutta kuva vaan keksi äsken. Kävellään sitten tänne, mikä voisi mennä pieleen. Death was in the air at Roscoe Street. I'd have to find Alex fast. No niin, nyt on meidän ase, nyt me voidaan vetää meidän shoot on shitkin. Nää naurattaa mua, mutta toisaalta nää on sikasiistejä. Mä rakastan tämmöistä bullet timea peleissä. Ähm. Se, se on omituinen. Max Payne lisäksi parhaitenhan bullet timea peleistä muistan, niin toi tota... Fjörissä. Ja jälkeenpäin ajateltuna mä oon miettinyt, että se on... Ai jaa, te olettekin pahiksi. Mä yritin kuunnella mitä te puhuitte, mutta ei sieltä puhuttu mitään muuta kuin... Mutta kun puhuttiin, mitä saadaan Maxi hengiltä, me ei onnistunut tällä kertaa. Niin joo, tossa on mun elämänmittari. Mä oon nyt jo niinku viidesosa ottanut vahinkoa, kun mä tossa hölmöilin. Tehdään tämmönen save ja toivotaan, ettei mun video kaadu. Okei, okay, hyvä, ei kaatunut. Siinä ihme hyytyminen tapahtuu, kun on tämmönen vanha peli, kun mä yritän tallentaa peli quick saveille. Mä nyt aistin, että saan selkää, niin kun tuli näitä vähän vaikeampia tappeluja kohti. Minikartta saattaa paljastaa salaisuuksia. Öö, ei se nyt mikään hirveä erikoinen pistä silmään. Mitä monta kymppiä me ollaan nyt luettu? Hermitin maja. Ah, se on joku tyypin nimi on Hermit. No, se, kyllä se pitäisi erakoksi kääntää. Hei Hermit, mitäs mä vähän lainaan sun? Aha. Oh, nukuitko hyvin, poika? Ja etkö vielä sitä samaa painajaista? Kun isäsi oli nuori, hän poikkesi usein tällä saarella. Okei. Okay. Se oli kiva tietää. Ups, mä heitin se jorpakkoa, se ei ole hyvä. And there you go. That is what a theoretical me doing Finnish commentary video would look like. <laughs> I don't know, like I thought I would cringe harder. And I have done a little bit of that, watching all these old videos, planning this retrospective. But I, that wasn't too bad, actually. It, it's weird. Like, I, I managed that all right. Although I really... If I have a bad habit of talking too fast in English, boy, it seems to come through even harder in Finnish. Uh, I really would need to get a handle on trying to, like, slow down my talking a little bit. But otherwise, I, I thought that went okay. Like, um... The, the one big reason, of course, why I do videos in English is, of course, reaching a larger audience. There's uh, a little bit more English-speaking viewers than there are Finnish-speaking viewers, you know. I don't know. I don't think I need to fact-check that one to make that claim. Uh, the other reason is um, I actually alluded to Mr. Lordy in a part of that video I didn't show about the fact that Mr. Lordy, the lead singer of the band Lordy, does not like to give interviews in Finnish because he feels like it doesn't really match his, like, character. And uh, if he, he used to, like, if he gave interviews in Finnish, he would have his back to the camera because he didn't want his voice associated with, um, uh, you know, the character. He's mellowed out over the years. I've seen him at uh, live concerts where he talks in Finnish, and he's a pretty good sport about it like i feel like the guy in general has is surprisingly humble after you know you know his big eurovision win and uh, head being in the clouds a bit there for a while uh but he, like, like 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 he he like is more chillaxed and i he's, he's got a bit of a hmm he's got a bit of a bumpkininess to his voice actually in finnish so i can understand why he might feel a little insecure about talking like that uh I feel like the same thing kind of came through in my Finnish video there, but like I didn't think it was terrible. Like I think you could, I think you could work with that concept, and I, I think I could have done videos in Finnish if I just like worked a little bit more on my presentation there. Uh, but um, nah, nah, I don't think that's gonna be the future of the channel. So no worries about that, all you Anglophone viewers out there. That is probably the last time you will ever have to put up with uh, me inundating you with bizarre Finno-Ugric ululations. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. 
Well, that was a delight. Let's jump ahead to 2018. Um, I don't know if this is the best clip, because I struggled a little bit to choose one from this game, but I did feel like I had to highlight this game on the channel. Like, it, it, it really... It really would do a disservice if I didn't talk about how, how important E7 was for me. Uh, I hmm, Again, this goes back to, like, I don't want to be, like, a braggart or anything. It doesn't come naturally to me, but, like, obviously I kind of somehow became associated with Falcom and East Games on this channel, like, a little bit. Like, I had listened to the soundtrack of the East Games for years, and I, at some point, at, for whatever reason, like, E7 was available on Steam, and I had seen, like, clips, and I had heard soundtrack of it. I'm pretty sure there were other East games as well, but I went for 7, which is not hated, but, like, really not considered the, like, best of the series, I would say. It's, um... Ooh, I was going to name some Final Fantasy that I consider similarly, like, kind of middle of the road, but then I realized the, the opinions on Final Fantasies are so goddamn split. Uh, let's say it's like the Skyward Sword equivalent, I guess, or maybe Twilight Princess. Like, it's, it, it, it's a part of the series, but it's got its fans, but it's generally considered, like, not as great. But I went with it, because I had played very little East, and... For some reason, like, this one is my most consistently, like, viewed and consistently well-liked series on the channel. Even to this day, like, uh, every once in a while when I'm looking up statistics, like, the E7 videos will pop up as, uh, you know, most most watched in, like, recent periods. Um, there are some other videos that have more views. I I'm not sure if any E7 video crossed over a thousand views. But, like, the East videos have the most engagement on average. Like, there's, like, all the videos have a lot of views. And I've gotten so many comments from people who have been, like, uh, you know, enjoying that series. So, um, I have to give my thanks to Falcom. Like, apparently, you're... You, well, you guys make great video games, first of all. Like, I, there's a reason I play East and Trails is that I love these games. But um, also, like, for whatever reason, this has been a real boost to the channel. Whenever I do, like, um, Falcom stuff. And, uh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot, you guys. Arigato gozaimashita, Um Yeah, so I... But the, I did struggle a little bit with picking a scene from E7 to pull up here in the retrospective. It, it's, it's, a, it's a nice game, and I really enjoyed my time with it. But there isn't, like, one, like, big that I could remember that was like, yeah, this awesome scene. So, I, I don't know. Just to showcase a little bit of all the characters and a little bit of the combat, here is the duel with um, returning character Geis, who was from E6, I think, is where he was introduced as first. A rare case of a returning character in this series. And um, let's take a look at how that went. Uh-oh. Once again, a voice, but I have no idea who it's for, so I can't read this with the proper voice. Can't come up with a voice that I think would fit the character, so I'll just go with just what I was afraid of. It is you. Oh, it's the mysterious guy. Um, not just what I was afraid of. It is you. Huh? What? I knew it. The man in black. I haven't seen you in half a year, Adol Kristen. I never imagined we'd meet again in a place like this. <laughs> Who in the world? Whoa! It's... It's guys! So I guess this means a lot to someone who's played previous East games. But as far as I can remember, a guy like this was not in... A guy like guys was not in the first East, so... I have no frame of reference for who this guy is. Sorry! The hell are you doing here? That would be my line. I've been hearing rumors about a red-haired adventurer all over the damn place. I was hoping they weren't actually talking about you. But, I mean, deep down, I kinda knew they had to be. Guess we'll just chalk this up to fate. 
Something you should be pretty used to by now. Oh crap, whoa! So, were we friends in the previous game, or...? <laughs> hey! What are you doing? What do you say, Adol? Why don't you show me how much your skills have improved since last time? Ah, a friendly bout, okay. I'd like you to meet my new poleaxe. Ooh, once again, no choice. We're like, freaking, alright, let's do this. What's going on here? Uh, you don't have to do this, guys. We don't want to fight you. <sighs> Stay back, Aisha. This is between those two. Let's give them some space. Boy, I wish there had been an option to save the game. Or, I mean, I had realized to save the game, but there was no tell that we were running into a freaking showdown with, um, returning character guy. <laughs> but... Or maybe he's not a returning character. Maybe he's like a character who's finally he's finally introduced to us, but like, like he was a, he was a known character all along, but we the players never knew about this guy. I doubt it though. Huh. Just like when we first met. Seems you've already gotten used to the weapons of this land. <gasps> this is that music. Uh, Dark mercenary guys. Like, this is the other song I heard. The first song I heard from this game I was like, Oh my god, this is a good song. And it's for this hype boss fight? Yes! Which means I get to put my all into this fight. Woo! Oh! Oh, not the voice I was expecting. Oh yeah! Woo! <laughs> He has, like, zero wind-up on his moves. And, and his combos carry on forever. Kind of what I'd expect from a boss like this. Ooh! I wonder... I'm gonna try and lose this, actually. How, how far away was my last save? I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, gonna try, I'm not gonna heal myself. I'll see if, uh, like, if, if I'm allowed to lose this. It's a friendly spar. I bet you get cool loot if you win, but... Ah, he got me. So, yeah, that fight didn't go super well, cause, uh, yeah, it's, uh, E7 wasn't the easiest game in the world. You can see I'm pretty, pretty sloppy in my combat there, but you can also see some cool moves of me trying to, like, slip in and out and get hits on guys, but, uh, and you can also see, I, 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 this is another problem I have not gotten over in 10 years, is when I'm kind of focused on the game, I start losing my words and I start saying nonsense, and I'm like, I'm gonna try to lose? What the hell does that mean? No, I, th I think the point I was making was that if, um, if I were to lose that fight, that would be fine, like, I didn't want to basically waste healing items to, like, stay competitive in that fight, because I was curious to see if, like, that gay that was a fight that you were allowed to lose. So, so that was what I was trying to say there, was that I'm not gonna, like, commit to this fight when I saw that I was kind of losing anyway. I was like, well, I'll just eat this loss, and maybe I'll just redo the fight if I really want to. I didn't end up doing that. I, we just went with it. I thought narratively it was fine that guys defeated Adol and was kind of like, you know, is this really the guy who I've defeated my brother before? Which, okay, spoilers for E6, I guess. Uh, well, I'll get to that someday, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, East, East is very good, very fun. I got to do fun voices again there. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know how I knew to, like do, like, that kind of Shadow the Hedgehog voice. Uh, just, like, I kind of sensed that Geis was the kind of, like, kind of dark rival character, so I did the kind of voice, like, you know, if Keanu Reeves, you know, gets sick and they have to get somebody else for Sonic 3, you know, they'll just call up me to do the voice of Shadow. Um, you know, something like that. <laughs> um... I think maybe that's why, like, something like East really works well for me is, like, uh... It's a simple plot, but with, like, really, like, bright and, you know, you know, exaggerated characters. But that means there's, like, very easily something for me to hook on to, like, in the story. You know, following the story, and then also if I'm going to do a voice, like, very easy to, like, get a handle on, like, what kind of voice to do for a character. 
I guess. Although, boy, once again, I'm like, ooh, I wish I could go back in time and like have a second pass on these recordings. Uh, like my doggy voice, I can probably do a little bit better in the future. Uh, a little trivia here for this: what I wanted to do for doggy was do a Patrick Warburton impression. I feel like he's he's a kind of character who could be voiced by Mr. Warburton. Of course, he's voiced by Patrick Seitz, another Patrick I just now realized, huh? Anyway, he's voiced by Patrick Seitz in uh, Oath in Felgana, which is a great choice, too. Mr. Seitz is a great voice actor and pretty good voice for uh, Dogie. But, like, I think also, like, Warburton could also do a pretty good job. So, you know, I, I that's what I was trying to do. I think what happened was that I kind of lost the thread the longer the recording went on that series and just kind of doing my own whatever voice for Dogi, which I don't know, maybe that like is good that I'm not just aping an established actor, like gave Dogi his own identity. But like, I really think, you know, I think today I could do a much better Patrick Warburton impression. If I really put my mind into it, I think I can, like, uh, get the cadence a little bit better, too, in there. So, uh, you can consider this a, uh, preview, you know, in, like, whenever we get around to doing another East game here on the channel. Uh, and Dogie's gonna be there helping out his buddy Adol. This is a preview of what he's gonna sound like that time, and I'm gonna try and commit to that, and not immediately just slip into whatever the heck this voice is, you know? Okay, I think I can try and avoid that, and let's try and keep it low and simple to really sell Dogie's uh, smoldering conviction, okay? Let's see how that goes. But yeah, okay, you know. I think I think that's all I'm going to talk about East today. Obviously, we played a couple more East games on the channel, and um, I'm completely smitten by the series. Just Falcom in general, as said already, I could go on and on, but um, good times. Very fun. Let's go to 2019, where another very important video game had been released. I think the recording already started in 2018. I think... Maybe... But, like, this happened in 2019, so whatever, it's fine. Um, Yakuza. Yakuza, or as it's now known nowadays, Like a Dragon, finally came on the PC. Uh, going back to that whole Valkyria Chronicles being a rare case in 2014, uh, 2018 was a much better place. Already in four years, like, suddenly the floodgates were open and there were so many PC ports. And the one I was chomping at the bit for was Yakuza. This, like classic beat-em-up series from Sega it had been still very niche back then as well. Uh, Yakuza 0, again, also broke the floodgates for Yakuza, and now that series is massively popular, and it's completely ridiculous to um, think now about a situation where there weren't a ton of those games available for PC players, but that's where we were in 2018. So um, when the PC gamer uh, E3 trailer rolled out, which was like, Yakuza 0 and Yakuza Kiwami coming to PC. That's one of the rare moments these days where I marked out. I was like, you know, Thor in the gladiatorial arena, just going, yes! Actually, that sounded more like General M. Bison from the Street Fighter cartoon. Yes! Yes! But that's where our headspace was. I, I try to keep my hype in check these days. I, I, I don't let myself get washed over by the hype. But, like, that, you know, was the big thing. Because I had I had listened to the soundtrack once again, another series I got into via the soundtrack. I had watched the Super Best Friends play Yakuza 4. I basically knew that, like, this is a series that I would L-O-V-E love. And I would have such a good time recording it. So when Yakuza 0 finally became a reality, I jumped on that as soon as... Uh, possible at all. But uh, the point I've chosen here to like reminisce on was the <laughs> the DIY um, special effects that I keep doing on my channel because I'm such a like this is such a non-professional thing going on here on the, um, on the um, on the channel I have. Like like I, I do everything so sloppily because I don't have the technical know-how and I'm and, and I, I, I 
don't have like the I, I haven't put in the time to learn like a lot of like editing trips and tricks and everything. So I, I, I am very like half-assing everything that I do here. And I try to like just lean in on the charm. So there's a moment in Yakuza Zero where um, you, you jump around between Osaka and uh, Tokyo. And um, the character Majima, who's mainly been in Osaka, goes to Tokyo near the end of the game. But you have to go back to Osaka to level up, and your only option is to take a taxi. But it's at that point of the game where shit is going down, and realistically, you would not have the time to take a taxi to Osaka and then come back to Tokyo to deal with the plot. So, um, you know, like, like it's like three hours by car, I think, to go from Tokyo to Osaka. So the idea was absurd, but like I, I, my, 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 I came up with the um, idea that the taxi is being driven by Speed Racer. That was my like uh, diegetic justification for how Majima could go to a different city that quickly and then like get really quickly back to Tokyo was like uh, you know Speed Racers driving that taxi. So first I had like just a ton of fun with entertaining the idea in like one episode just being like lol <laughs> it's freaking Speed Racer behind the wheel there and then I decided to do a cold open for the next episode with like a custom graphic, quote unquote, I did, which at that point I didn't have my um, tablet yet for drawing. So it was literally just a uh, pencil drawing on paper that I scanned and slid across the screen. Let's look at how that goes. Oh man, what's our episode time? Oh, we got like uh, 15 minutes. I I'm feeling I'm just going to be tons of plot, but... We could go to Osaka. You know, because, you know, we got only so little episode time left. I'm gonna... I'm gonna break very similitude a little bit here. Hey, here's the thing. Let's pretend that that speed racer behind the... Uh, behind the um, wheel there. Like, he can get me to Osaka in like 20 minutes. So... <laughs> Go speed racer, there he goes. Vroom. It's all good, guys, don't worry. Freaking got the Mach 5 here. Well, this is probably a few mocks below the Mach 5. This crummy taxi. It's still, it's, it's still fine, you guys. Thanks for the ride there, Speed. Good luck with the next races, all right? I've got business to take care of. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's Yakuza Zero. Oh, boy. I was so proud of that idea when I came up with it, like, between recordings. Like, hey, what if I just did, like, this goof at the start of the next episode? And then I did it, and it's... <laughs> it's such amateur hour, but um, I think it's cute. I, I really, I, I really thought it was funny. Like, um, there's something to be said about the like, just the kind of earnestness of like doing an idea that I think, like, still like will like provide some entertainment for people. Like, I wouldn't say that the ideas alone will you know, win people over. Like, like the whole idea of the ideas guy just keeps being disproven as, like, uh, not a thing. Like, you have to execute your ideas somehow, either personally or, like, you know, getting working with somebody to execute them. But I think, it's still, if the, like, idea is really funny, like, it's, like, a really good gag, and you can, like, somehow, like, present it. I think the, just the, just the, novelness of the idea will uh, fill in the gaps in maybe the more amateurish presentation is what I'm saying. So, so you know, this funny moment of coming up with like, oh yeah, what if Speed Racer was in Yakuza? It, it kind of sort of kind of makes sense, especially with the craziness of the like Dragon series. And then like making that like little goof intro, like it, it does wonders. Like there's so many like... Um, you know, memes online where obviously like the technical 
the technical side of it is like really lacking but like just just the like the funniness inherent to it is an art in itself and it like sells the idea so yeah so i think that was really good that was really good and and, and yakuza 0 in general really good like um definitely gonna be looking into playing another yakuza fairly soon on the channel as a little preview here i haven't really figured out when exactly but might be sooner than you think <laughs> for, for all i know it, there's actually one going on right now because i'm recording this uh, retrospective a good deal in advance so i don't know <laughs> um but yeah that was really good fun like uh and again, I'm so glad that the Like a Dragon games are now a hit and are available on the PC as well, so yours truly can enjoy them as well. But uh, let's move on to 2020. Now here, I want to go back to my quote-unquote voice acting career one more time. I want to actually highlight the, my good work. I want to do highlight, I think, my best work that I've done, my best line read. Uh, you know, this is a almost a you know hero's journey here of listening to those earlier ones where I'm still looking for, like you know, I've got a lot of moxie, a lot of you know, got a lot of like you know, um, pep fighting power, but like actual like execution is still on a search a little bit. I think here is where things went well because uh, in 2020, actually again, I think I started in 2019, but around that time I started recording Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. And funny thing, this was a really early request, like like 2014, 2015, like just one of those that like stuck in my mind. Someone was like, have you ever considered Ace Attorney? I don't know why the person suggested that because uh, like none of the games I had played up until then were anything like Phoenix Wright. But they were super correct because once, you know, a few years later and Phoenix Wright actually is available on PC... Again, there's that, like, waiting for the port to happen, and it did. I decided, like, hell yeah, let's just go and play. I bet I'll have a good time. And it turns out that I had an incredibly good time. I think Ace Attorney is one of my best work. Uh, the, like, commentary is freaking on point, And I think I really inhabited the characters really well in that when voicing them. Um, you know, so... There's one thing I would have liked to talk about, but it's a huge spoiler for the, like, case number four, which is towards the end. Uh, so I can't, like, showcase that here. It's too big of a spoiler. Uh, basically, I'll just surmise it, and Ace Attorney fans will know what I'm talking about, is one character was, it turns out to be a completely different character personality-wise and background. So... And, and, and I didn't, of course, know about that going in blind. So I was doing a completely, like, you know, unplanned voice. So I was doing, like, a really different personality for this character. And then suddenly I had to uh, voice a, a, a complete personality change, but still do the same voice. And I had to, like, really sell that. And that was a really fun, impromptu challenge that I really enjoyed. But I can't, again, show clips of, like, me doing the... Two different characters with the same voice, basically, thing that happened there. It, it's too bad. Just I, please watch my <laughs> Ace Attorney playthrough. Please watch uh, the Case 4 playthrough, if you know, because that's also really good work as well. But no, actually, there's one line read that I think was even better. Like, I think that's my best work. And this one's also a bit of a spoiler, like a bit of a medium sized one, but it's in the middle of a case. And it's not the conclusion. It's the conclusion for that trial scene, but it's it's you know it's not the whole whole case solved. So I am gonna spoil this. You know whatever. This is your spoiler warning. Um, it is in the second case when you are um, doing uh, the court uh, interrogation of April May, and at the very end you have to um, interrogate the bellboy. And the moment where you break the case, where you find the contradiction, um, which apparently I was really stressed out that you have to pick the right one out of the three ones. And I picked the one about um, the what Miss May ordered to her um, room, the, the order of drinks. Apparently you can pick any of those, actually. But in the moment, I was freaking hooked and so worried that I'm going to pick the right one. And when I, when I took that and it turned out to work incredibly good and i think that came through in my voice acting through because i think 
when when well you'll be the judge listen to phoenix wright as voiced by yours truly express his incredulity at the price of the drinks i think this is my best line read what wait please wait yes does the defense have something to add one last question let me ask one last question your honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. No, no, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Uh... Room service! Because... Oh my god, I told myself I need to remember this. She had like... She had like room service for two in there. Who was the other pair? Uh, yes, yes, I, I think we have to go with this, guys, right? Oh my god, for a second I just stared at these, like, with my jaw hanging open, these options, like... I don't know which is the correct one, but I think... I think that's it. T tell me again about, uh, room service. Uh, again, sir? At exactly 9 o'clock, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee. Eighteen dollars was the charge, as I recall. I see. Eh? Huh? Eighteen dollars? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, uh, iced coffee for two, you know. And we don't skimp on the ice, sir. For two, eh? For a hot minute, I thought I picked the wrong choice there. The way that Phoenix was so unsurely grilling him. Oh my god, I'm so relieved. Ah! What did he say? What did you say? Huh! Oh, uh, uh, rather quite. So there you go. I am, to this day, incredibly proud of my work on Ace Attorney, and I think this scene really encapsulated my good work. Eighteen dollars! Just so good. And I also really liked listening again. I really liked that, and we don't skimp on the ice, sir. Like, that was also very funny. I actually, I named the episode that because it, I thought it was so good. But, uh, yeah, uh... It's been a real pleasure being able to, like, do this as well when playing these games, doing all these dumb voices. Um, and, look, again, just so I don't get too self-congratulatory, I have listened to, for example, uh, Pro ZD and his buddy, who I don't remember the name. I've watched some videos of them playing through this exact same Ace Attorney, and I've just, like, melted into a puddle listening to how, like, insanely good, of course... Uh, Sung Wan Cho, Pro ZD, is at uh, doing these voices. Like, his choice for Edgeworth, just like this very, like, calculating voice. Like, I can't do it. Like, he's so good, but, like, it's so good. I, I wanted to, like, more like this, like, Cold Fury kind of thing for Edgeworth is was when I, like, did it. So, so that's why I play Edgeworth. Like, he's constantly a little bit strained, you know? That was kind of what I... That's what I had my impression going into this series about Edgeworth. So this is the voice I picked. But, like, what, what I've heard other people do, too, is just, like, really good as well. So, of course, I'm not a professional voice actor, and I don't think I ever will be. But, you know, again, I get to live a dream just a little bit doing these. So I really hope there's someone out there who appreciates this. Again, I know that, like... First of all, there's people who don't want the dialogue read in these games, and then there's people who probably would prefer a more professional touch. Um, I imagine those people have checked out long, long ago. Like, I don't have to make these videos to please everybody. So I'm going to be doing, like, these kinds of, like, playthroughs that give me an opportunity to do stupid voices for characters, and I'm just going to trust that my work appeals to somebody. And um, I think Ace Attorney is the, like still my best on that front. So if you haven't watched that and like that, that's, that's what you've liked about my work is all the voices I do. I 
do think Ace Attorney would be the one I would tell you to go look back on. At least, at least if you know Ace Attorney and you know the like big moments, please check out like uh, how I did with those. Uh, nah. Okay, that was 2020. Now then, we're getting close to the end here. Three more thingies here to look at. And maybe mm, we'll see if I have time for a little bonus one, but nah. Um, okay, uh, 2021 was uh, Halo's 20th anniversary. I've done a couple of these anniversary thingies. I did Half-Life in 2018, similarly 20 years. In fact, now it's 2024, and Half-Life 2 is 20 years old. Hmm. Anyway, but Halo, 2021. Halo was 20 years old. And I don't remember who, which one of us was the one to suggest it, but my friend Jonathan, again, came, came with me to record a playthrough together of that. Like, I, I don't I really, I don't remember anymore. Was it he who was like, hey, you know what we should do? Or was it me who was like, hey, I'm planning to play Halo and would you help me out? But in any case, since uh, the Master Chief Collection had the co-op version of Halo Combat Evolved, of course we jumped in on that. So this was a rare case of me recording with an actual other person. And this was the first series that we ever uh, recorded through. And again, I think this is some of my best work. Some of our best work. Now I'm being rude. Um, like, like I said today earlier that I, um, I, I, I prefer to record myself alone. I don't like organizing these, but every once in a while the lark hits you and you do want to do this. And thankfully Jonathan was ready to go. I struggled again to pick a s specific scene, um, to showcase like what it really sounds like when I've got like somebody really smart to play off of and like have a good banter about video game topics. But I decided to go with, since it's such a fantastic level, the opening to the silent cartographer. Let's see a little bit of us just, like, this isn't a like, you know, banger moment. This is just two, two dudes like having a good bant, I feel like. So, you know, let's check in on that for a bit. Yay, finally. Hey, now we get the best level, basically. Oh, this opening sequence, I consider this the best of Halo. Oh yeah, I think this was the one one of the levels that they showcased in all the early demos that he, when you got to play it, especially this part where you get to see the, the coming in. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and we and our boys roll up on this beach like Normandy. Oh my god. Right. And this is actually something I like about the, um, the cutscenes. I don't know, actually... Um, are you in your own pelican right now? Uh, kind of looks like it. Yes, yes, I am. I got my lads here, but, uh... Right, and I can actually see... Yeah, I saw you coming out, which gives this whole thing an entirely different kind of sense of scope, because it actually feels like that, holy crap, we have enough people and we have enough weaponry in here for all of us to, you know, go on our own ships. Yeah, that whole, like, this is our army and we're, like, engaging. This is the closest Halo gets to that, or, like, the most it gets to it, I feel like. It's... What a, what a fantastic level this is. Right, and this is also just such a... Um, like, you, you can instantly see the differences, um, how the gameplay design and narrative design, how they were shifting. Like, if that mm. previous level we just were complaining about, which is utterly boring. Yeah. Um, and now this is just completely engaging, and it feels like a completely different game. Like, we've just left, uh, you know, five years in development. Ah, oh, man, I mean, it's already over, and it was, like, so freaking cool. Yep. Hell yeah. And we instantly get a warthog, and we're instantly on a place where you you have a chance to go wherever you like. But you yeah. had a ma massive, amazing beach site landing and a big fight with epic music playing. And it's just, it's just great that this is, like, you can see that we are leaving the crummy past behind. Yeah, this is so good. Um, shall I drive now? Yeah, I'll, go for I'll, it. I'll do hey, it this time. The Marine took my spot. Okay, Get out of there. Out. <laughs> well, at least they're polite enough. I mean, it's the Master Chief, so if he tells you to get off, you yeah. know, you gotta do it. Excuse me, I would like to drive. No. Sure thing, boss. <laughs> oh, wasn't that fun? You even got to hear Jonathan do a little voice acting of his own there at the end when he did his little Master Chief impression. That was very cute. No, but that was great. That's that's uh, fun. Like I, I told you that um, way, way before 
you know, uh, YouTube was a thing when I was a kid. Like, I and my friends would have a good time just riffing on games that we were playing. So this Halo playthrough was really a little bit of that. But also, Jonathan's just, like, a really smart guy and uh, very knowledgeable on, like, media. Um, his main passion is film, if you ever listen to him really go on. Like, film is that he really eats and breathes, but, like... Uh, he's still really smart about video games as well, so it was really good to be able to play off somebody who knows so much about the subject that um, uh, we are playing through to like you know give like a really good like perspective. And it's a uh, I'm I'm just a little enemies because he's such a good like um, he's, he's such a clear concise speaker and he's got like a really calm manner. Like he can really like articulate his points really well whereas i'm just like yeah and then the and then the mm, and i love the mm, yes yes it's the, the 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 vibes of the game are really coming through like it's uh, yeah you know <laughs> i just feel like that in comparison but no it's it's super good because uh yeah I, I i have to admit that i because because I, I kind of style myself as a pretty chillax guy in general and i do play it up a little bit for the camera I don't think there's any shame in admitting that because I think everybody does it on some unconscious level if they are like in front of a crowd, whether on a camera or like an actual people. Like everyone will put on a little bit of an, a, bit, a little bit of a, like an act, a little bit of a show. And I do that too. So I, I'm, I'm a little bit more animated when I uh, record these playthroughs than I would be if I was just like shooting the shit with my friends about these video games. Or, you know, in general, you know. So I, I wish uh, uh, when, when Jonathan is hanging out and also recording and he, like, manages to, like, keep his composure so well all the time. I, I just feel like, man, I wish I could, like, also do that. But, nah, You know. The, you know, the, each his own uh, strengths and weaknesses, I guess. I don't know. So, yeah, this Halo playthrough was super good that we got to be able to do that with, with, with my friend there. We did another playthrough after this that was also completed. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2. Both of these are, I again, just some really good work on my channel, and I hope uh, you folks have enjoyed them as well. Mm. Ah! Okay, let's go to 2022. And this one was one of these, like, when I, some of these years I had to, like, kind of, like, comb through the years to kind of remind myself of what happened what year and what I could pull out of there. 2022 was a lock-in as well. Uh, if the Ace Attorney clip was my best, like, voice acting side, I think this was my best... Um, do I say gameplay? Because I don't play super well. But in the moment of it, I'm, like, in it. And I do what, to me, feels incredibly good. And I, I like... This is fantastic. In Ace Combat 7... Your rival character is called Mihai, and um, you. Here's some spoilers for Ace Combat again. There's you no know, spoilers once again coming up. In Ace Combat 7, like you fight Mihai three times, and I really struggled through the first two encounters earlier in the game. But then near the end of the game, you have your final duel with Mihai, which I pulled off on my first go. Now, I've read somewhere online that that final battle's dynamic uh, difficulty is a little dynamic. Like, apparently, Mihai... If if uh, if you believe these comments I read somewhere, Mihai's AI it tunes itself a little bit to your gameplay to kind of match how good you are. I didn't know that at the time. If that's true, it is one of the best implementations of such dynamic difficulty because I did not get the feeling that Mihai was, like... Uh, handicapping himself in order to like match my subpar playing instead i felt like a freaking badass hero uh, pulling off this win on my first go so i've been avoiding trying to be mega indulgent now we're just gonna do it i'm gonna put the entire fight here and we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna enjoy this one and just like uh, if you want to like skip the main show just like just like go towards the end if you can hear my honest shock at pulling off this win, I think that's worth listening to. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. A railgun? 
from the east. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. I yeah, oh my god, that is a rail gun. Whoa! Oh my god, what is going on? XO2S, what is he? What are we doing? So he's got some super railgun plane? I know who this is. So this is it then, huh? I feel like this is now time to boogie against this man. Yeah! And apparently that's what we're gonna be doing. You got a fancy plane, but I mine's pretty good too, so let's go, Mihai. Oh my god, this music. That looks bad. Jesus! Really? Oh my god, this music. Here we go, he's far away again. I, I gotta stop firing double missiles. Gotta go for single taps. More hit confirms. He's trailing smoke. Ah! I can't believe there was a drop in the song like that. Just when uh, I dodged the missile. That's insane. I can't believe this music either. This is nuts. I haven't actually heard this song before, so I'm like completely like enraptured right now. Oh shit! Damn it, now he's firing triple shots. I don't think so. Oh, interesting, is there a window to take some shots on him after he fires the railgun? I'm gonna try, boss! So yeah, this is a Kyle Bear here talking right now. Freaking Ryu! I should have shot only one missile there. Ooh! Damn, that's some cocky words from Mihai. What the? That hit? Nice. That flip of his. Mother, come on! Oh, so close! Should have fired just the one missile again. I'm getting sloppy here. Not this time, sucker. It's just you and me. Right, because they've been... Once again, I've shot two. Greedy. Oh, not this time. He dodges it, but not this time. Try this on! No, not yet. Still not there. For this one! Or this one! Gotta keep the pressure. See, I gotta get tempo on those missiles. 
You can't keep dodging all of them. Oh yeah! Small arms fire. Oh, he's backing off. What? It's a hit. The unidentified aircraft is going down. I got him. Did I? Trigger splashed a bandit. What? No way. I Can you hear me? Pilot with the three strikes. I Really? Who oh boy? The cherry on top there is the music climaxing just as I land the kill shot on Mihai. To this day, it is mind-blowing to me that that, like, happened. <laughs> and, like, music is incredibly central to Ace Combat in general, obviously. Like, it really, like, sets the mood and everything. And this felt almost choreographed in, like, how perfectly the, like, Latin chanting climaxed as uh, the duo came to an end. Just beautiful, beautiful. Uh, yeah, I, a little bit of like, you know, again, like behind the scenes, like I really needed this, I feel like. I really needed this like win. Um, 2022 was an incredibly shitty year for me, if we're like going to be honest. Like that's when I had to like deal with a really close death in the family, like early in the year. And... I did surprisingly well in dealing with that, but I also, like, had to, like, just put the channel on hiatus because there was so much stuff going around that that I couldn't, like, work on the videos, like, enough to be able to, like, continue the channel. Like, for a hot second, I thought I just reduced the amount of, like, games down to, like, two a week. And then I was like, no, even then, like, I haven't recorded in ages because of all this stuff I have to take care of, so... I don't like doing that because I find consistency is incredibly important. Before YouTube, again, I read a lot of web, com web bleh, read a lot of web comics growing up, and the number one thing about web comics was back then the rule that kind of everyone understood was that a consistent schedule was like a make it or break it thing. Like oh, perhaps even more important than the quality of the thing itself. Like it's what people like gravitate to is like knowing that like. There will be a new issue, like, or a new strip, like, at, at a, on a certain day, whenever it happens. Like, uh, the, the co web comics that, like, upload irregularly, those are the ones that, like, would more often just crash and burn, is just the reality of it. So I, I, I have tried to operate with that same ethos when I do my videos, and for the most part, I do really well on it. But, like, that, like, had put me out of commission for, like, a couple of months, having to deal with all the problems in real life. And um, Ace Combat 7 was an amazing pickup. I knew that I would love this game because, like, I think Ace Combat in general is super cool. I've only ever played Assault Horizon before this one, but I've watched clips. I've listened to the soundtrack. I knew that, like, Ace Combat 7 would be the perfect thing to pick up and play when, like, I, when my channel returned. So that was really good. But then Ace Combat 7 was also, like, really challenging. Like, I struggled to get a grip with how to play such an arcade game. So those early six or seven episodes are a bit of a clown show as I try to learn the ropes. This is not a fr an affront against the game. That's, like, absolutely the game demanding me to, like, put in work into it. And then I did. And that's why when this win happened, like... Again, like I said, I felt like I needed a big win, even in like a small way, like me just beating a tough boss in a video game. Like, uh, you know, it, it's it's in the grand scheme of things, that's nothing. That's just me like playing a video game for 10 minutes. But like in the context of like having had a pretty rough time uh, that year, just like being able to record a really cool fight, even if my gameplay isn't amazing, just the like the 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 spectacle is amazing, and the fact that I pulled off the win on go number one, just beautiful, and and like that's why I like this one is the one that I remember out of like all the like cool like moments throughout my videos over the last ten years. Like there's been other like you know sequences and boss fights and stuff where I've like done really well um I could have put up the Kane boss fight from Titanfall 2 
was one um certainly the east games have had a couple where i just like went into like kick ass mode and beat the boss very handily um i i could i could i could hunt those down but mihai will stick to me as like the the best like fight <laughs> uh, the best encounter i had in a video game i feel like i nah. gonna gonna go with that now then finally we come to 2023 uh this was kind of, I this was actually, I guess it's because it's in recent memory. I, I struggled with what I wanted to bring up. And I said I might do an extra video, like, like an extra, extra clip here. I don't think I'll do that. I'll just describe them in like very briefly, the couple of other things that I think were awesome in 2023 that I could have highlighted here. Um, but you'll just have to go look it up yourself. Um, one was the... Uh, 10th anniversary of Metal Gear Rising, one of my favorite video games, where I went completely bonkers and recorded a single playthrough of it in like a single sitting. There's a couple of cuts in the video when I had to like take a break to eat or just stretch and stuff, but like I did do it all in that one day and it's uh, I think it's seven hours long. I knew I could pull off something like that, I'm pretty sure, but uh, it it you know but it was like still a lot of work but i'm really i i feel like i got all the points i wanted to get about metal gear rising in that video so i'm incredibly proud of that work so um if you have seven hours i please go watch that the other one was and this will get into spoiler territory in trails in the sky which shot up to one of my favorite rpgs ever when i played it on the channel and yeah, again, last warning, first chapter of Trails in the Sky, there's going to be a big spoiler about a couple of characters here, but my my absolute elation at Chloe being revealed to be a princess. I love uh, princesses, so, you know, that was pretty hype, but, like, I also, like, guessed it early with the character of Josette, who is this mild-mannered, like, student but then she turns out to be like a sky bandit and she's a bad guy. And I remember talking about that. I'm like, you know, like I thought there was something up with her, but I thought she might be, you know, something, you know, more benevolent, you know, like, 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 like a real like kind of flower girl, good guy. And I think, did I mention that I thought that she might secretly be a princess or something? I don't know. But like, I kind of guessed that that plot twist could happen in the game, that the mild mannered student is actually a princess. So then when Chloe was introduced, I had been disarmed by Josette to not even think about that option at that point. So when, when I was hanging out with Chloe in the game, I was just like, here's this fun, like, you know, student from the Academy. And she's a fun character. So when they started layering in the, like, you know, hints that there's something more to her and she's, like, interacting with, like, members of the, like, uh, royalty or the royal guard and stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, my God. And I think I did mentioned, like, at some point, I th said my theories, like, I think they're p pulling one on me and she might be a princess. And if that happens, I'm going to mark out and, like, this is going to be my favorite thing in the world. And then it did happen and it's fantastic and I love it. But, like, I'd have to hunt down so many clips to do that. I can't do that right now anymore. I've gone so long with this video anyway. So we're not going to... We're not gonna go back to that. Please just look up some of the clips where Chloe shows up in um, Trails in the Sky and you can appreciate how well this character was written and how much I loved the interactions with her. <laughs> no. uh, but okay, let's go with a funny moment instead for the wrap up. The other big thing was the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which got a PC port, I think at the end of 2022. I don't quite remember. But anyway, I, I did it in 22, 23, I think, was when I did it. And um, this was the game that got me to actually exercise during the squatting mini game. So, so Final Fantasy VII re is one of my... It was an incredibly important in my formative years game. Like, it really... It really, like, defined, like, it changed me in terms of, like, what I like about stories and video games. It was, like, a revelatory experience playing the original Final Fantasy VII. So I think my playthrough of the remake is still, like, one of my best work as well, as I get to talk about what that game meant to me and, like, how it's reflected in the remake and, like, what the remake does and everything. I, I, it was a unique experience that I really liked. But anyway, to go to the silly part, the squatting mini game. So this was already in the uh, original Final Fantasy VII is a mini game where you have to do squats. And I was reminded of a games done quick 
playthrough of FF7 where the crowd participated uh, in it. And um, and after a little hesitation, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it right now. I, I can squat while playing this game. So I, that's what I did. And it's really, really laughable. But uh, here we go. Let's watch. Okay, one more. Like like I said, now that I said I'm going to do it, this is so stupid, but here we go. I, I, I'm not going to do it on that difficulty, but we're going to do this on basic difficulty. All right, I'm standing now, if you guys can hear. All right. <laughs> this is so... Oh, boy. All right. So I'm going to be counting off my own squats while I try to match the squats in this game. Your muscular metal against mine? You bet I am, Ronnie. Okay, and I, I really hope everyone at home is doing this now as well. I'm freaking I'm putting myself on the line. Okay. No way I'm letting you win. Two. One. Go. Okay. One. Two. Three. Oh, shit. I don't <laughs> know. Oh, Oh, I should be doing these even while clouds will get okay. four, five, six. I should be holding them, by the way. You're supposed to hold the pose when you crouch down. I think I'm up to seven now, but I'm. But I guess I'm racing these guys, so I can't help myself. Eight, nine. Oh no! Yeah, this is actually really hard. Seven. Keep me keeping my back more straight, too. I'm having bad form here. Twelve. I knew you could do it. That's how it's done. Uh, so I, I, sorry, I should be counting out. Fifteen. I think I'm up to... Uh, Fifteen, sixteen, no, seven. Oh, uh, no. Eighteen. Nineteen. Oh, God. Uh, I think I got the 20 there. I'm sorry. That wasn't. It turns out that was actually really hard to do all that. Commentating and counting. <laughs> okay. I'm impressed. Okay, so for the record, I don't know if 20 squats in that time is good or not. Perhaps, perhaps um, you know that's like a really subpar showing anyway but on the off chance that that's actually kind of like oh that's pretty cool to do 20 squats that quick uh i am in terrible shape i'm an out of shape puts and i uh, did those squats really terribly while holding onto the controller and trying to do the mini game in in in, in final fantasy 7 remake so like that, that there was nothing impressive about what I just did. It was mainly just for the humor factor. Uh, the only reason I could like talk with a little bit of like knowledge about like uh, exercise stuff, like squad routine and everything, is the fact that I have played uh, Ring Fit Adventure like uh, a dozen times or so, I guess. And you do a lot of squatting in that game. So like, if I had not do done that, I would have no idea like what the like. What, what to say about the subject there but uh yeah i just i felt bad because you didn't see in this recording like i played through that normally and i remember talking about the like games done quick event with the impromptu crowd squatting and i i remember telling like the viewers like if you want to like this is your chance like get up and do some squatting right now while i played the thing normally and then i immediately felt bad because i'm like here i am telling others to like do exercise while I'm just like sitting on my ass playing a video game. So, uh, you know, stricken by, you know, guilt, I then was like, well, I got to replay that mini game and now I got to exercise myself. So I did. And hey, I, I beat the mini game against, uh, I forget that guy's name, you know, even even while the uh, putting on this handicap of I'm actually doing squats in real life. So I don't know, something fun about that. Good stuff. Good stuff. But yeah, now we reach 2024, the current year, and I don't have a best of clip for this year yet. That'll maybe be in 10 years time then. We'll look back on what was the like moment I remember most fondly from this year. We are basically done with the retrospective. Thank you so much for watching this and taking this trip down memory lane. I hope my... Uh, director's commentary rambling here was uh, fun and um, I hope you enjoyed the event. Uh, if you have been watching this uh, show for the last 10 years or however many years, then thanks so much for being a part of uh, the uh, 
the, uh, well, it's not the Minsk and Friends anymore. I got to remember now. It's the Your Pal Minsk <laughs> YouTube experiment. Uh, how am I going to refer to it? Because, like, Minsk and Friends was kind of a show title, while Your Pal Minsk is kind of my internet handle now. Hmm. I'll have, to, I'll have to meditate on that. But anyway, but the point is, thank you so much, you know, for your time and patience and uh, your patronage. It was, uh, it was and will be lovely. Um... Let's freaking close out with a look at the future, I guess. Uh, on the short term, video games that I want to play in the near future, and again, some of these might actually be playing right now, because I am recording this well in advance, so I get this video done. Um, let's see, I would like to get into Yakuza again, or Like a Dragon is the name now, but you know the next one's Yakuza Kiwami 2. I would like to get into that again. Of course, Trails in the Sky will be coming back as soon as uh, Chained Echoes wraps up, because I, I just cannot leave that story untold. I at least need to play uh, part two, second chapter of Trails in the Sky. Um, uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Rising, I think, is... No, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink? I, whatever is the hack and slash Grand Blue Fantasy game, like that's something that I'm really interested in, so that's on my short-term list of stuff to do. Um... Thinking here, what's like some smaller names that I would really like to play? Because like then there's like there's so many series that I've started over the years and I'd like to get back to. Like Ace Attorney was one, Shantae is one. Uh, but some of them I'm like, I, do I jump into and commit to those right now? When some of these are burning a hole in my pocket a little bit more. But then I think about like, well, I've already played so much Yakuza and East and Falcom games and Final Fantasy. Oh, by the way, I'm really hoping Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, sorry, Rebirth gets its PC port soon. Um, that'll, that'll definitely be a thing. Um, I'm like, ooh, how do I balance it all? So I'm, I'm not sure, but um, yeah. Oh, oh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima is uh, getting a PC port finally. I think it's out by the time this episode comes out. So if, I haven't, if I'm not recording that yet, I will probably be doing that soon as well. Every once in a while, I play one of these big tent pole games. Because I try to have like a lot of variety. If you haven't told by now, you haven't been able to tell by now, I try to have like a good variety on the amount of content I have. So the Monday and Tuesday slots are usually always for some kind of RPG. But, you know, even there I try to get like a little bit of variety. So it's not just a Final Fantasy and... Uh, trails in this whatever hour i guess i don't know and then the other two slots i kind of vary it up but i try to have like a little bit of like a smaller like you know more indie game and then sometimes i have like a big tentpole games so northern journey is like the really big indie thing happening right now on the channel maybe it's wrapped up by the time this episode comes out again i don't know but then the counter that like like ghost of tsushima would be like the next big 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 name game i would like to play and um but otherwise, you know, no, no. sky's the limit, I suppose. Now, I want to get somber here one more time real quick. This has been, because I can't help but be a little bit somber thinking about all this, like, what was and could have been and what's happened and everything. Now I want to be a little bit somber about what will be real quick. So, uh, you know, entertain me for just a moment here as I uh, break myself down a little bit. Um... The question, of course, is will there be a 20th anniversary for the channel? Like, will I keep doing this another 10 years? I think I think that's a valid question that it's better that we do face here. Yes? No? Yes? Maybe? Because mm. um, also, I think there's been a few, like, um, kind of... It's been a little bit in the news, when I say news, like internet news, like, like certain like uh, longtime YouTube people have called it quits recently. Uh, a lot of people have been like, I've been doing this for 10 years and I want to move on and do something else, you know. Uh, it, it, I've felt like a little bit of a trend of that. Now, am I falling into that myself? Um... Well, to assuage your fears, not at least immediately, because, again, I just rattled off a bunch of video games I would love to play and talk about. So I, I don't think I'm done with this, like, project, if you want to call it that. Not yet. I do want to keep doing this. Uh, however, I may have to change the format up since... I think I would like to do something else as well. I'm not sure. I'm really soul-searching, okay? And the thing is, like, 
um, I've been doing three games a week, three games at a time for a few years now. I tried that really early in my career, like in 2016 or 17, something like that, and then immediately realized, no, I cannot keep up the pace uh, of recording that much, so I had to quit for a while. Then in, I think, 2020, maybe, it turned out that I actually, you know, life situation changed up, and I did have the time to record, like, three different games at the same time, and um, while I was looking up these um, clips, I'm not going to put this clip up, but, like, it's, I guess it's a little bit part of the retrospective. I happened to watch um, my intro to Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight, which was the first game to become the th number three slot in like 2020 or 2019, whenever it was. And I, I open up the episode by talking about my motivation of like switching it up to three games. And like I could hear my own passion about like wanting to go through all these games that I love. And I could also tell my like anxiety of like, there's so much I want to do. Like I even, even with, even if I like played games all the time, I probably wouldn't play every game in the world that I would like to do. It's just a sad reality. And, um, that's also goes a little bit into me thinking about like, what do I commit to playing? Because that's, that's time away from some other game I'm not playing. Right. So uh, I, I listened to that wistfully about my 2020 self, like thinking about like how I really want to do this like uh, let's play thing, like really get the games out there that I want to do. But like I, I do think that I might want to do something else and I'm meditating over it. And that might call that I do need to pare down the amount of games I play. It might be that I have to drop the third game at some point. So the show might change to be like two games a week again so that I have the time to work on something else. Um, uh, I, I, I basically, as you may know, I started doing art again in 2021, I think, was when I got my... Um, that's when I started doing like streaming and I got my... Um, Wacom, 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 my Cintiq tablet to like do art because again when I was a little kid I drew a bunch of comics all the time I wanted to do like draw art and I kind of gave up on that for several years again for reasons of like not like putting myself out there you know not not the best reasons for quitting for sure and I kind of got back into the saddle in 21 and for the last couple of years, now that I've seen that I am a better artist than I at least was years ago, I have gone back to thinking that I would like to draw a comic. Like, it's been, um, it has been, like, floating in my brain since 2022 by now. So for almost two years, I have just, like, this idea of what the comic I would like to draw is. Like, it would basically be a web comic, obviously, but but I, the format I would want to be like a regular comic book, like you know the kind of top down page, you know, something like you could bind as a you know page if you got really, really like you know extravagant. But I don't obviously that's putting cart way in front of the horse. I don't want to like plan something that crazy. But but I would like to draw a web comic. I think. Um, but like those anxieties I talked at the start of this recording obviously are still there and they're like really scaring me a little bit because um, as I said, like I would start comics or I would start writing or I would come up with cool ideas as a kid and then I would get bored halfway and move on to something else and eventually I got really sick with myself of like constantly starting projects and not seeing them through. There was a really like rough patch for a couple of years where I was just like, well, I'll never get anything done, so I'm just not even going to do anything. And that was like the worst possible mindset. I'm grateful that I only had that for like a year or two. And then I started like thinking like, no, I got to think of something to do. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is like, I'm so scared of starting this project and it... Uh, the same thing happening again. Like once again, I would like kind of like, you know, like lose it and not finish the work. And I don't know how I'd react to that because like, um, yeah, I don't know. I hate to say the word hate, but I feel like I would hate myself if that happened. But the thing is, do I hate myself more for not even being too scared to try 
like you know just like um you know like do uh, you know um like do i hate myself not for having like taken this shot or do i hate myself for having taken the shot and failed it. Uh, this goes back to that Churchill quote that a lot of people like to trot out about the man in the arena. I don't actually like that quote, um, or I, I don't like its application, because a lot of times I see people use it to deflect criticism, Like, I, and I find that a lot, that's a little embarrassing. It's like people who like did create something, but then they get like, you know, critique about their work. And then they're like, well, you know, men in the arena, at least I made something unlike those poor souls who never, never, you know, never tried and failed. You know, like like that when 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 that quote gets trotted out at that point, I kind of roll my eyes. But um, of course, the like, I think there is a kernel of truth there is the ultimate point. And um I struggle with it for sure. I don't know. I don't know. But they also, I just like, the, I, I don't want to say I hate myself because I know I should also be kinder to myself. Like, you know, I'm freaking YouTube work has been good. My The art I draw right now, I'm really happy with it. So, like, I really shouldn't beat myself up if, like, I have a good idea that, that didn't turn out to be so good after all. So, I don't know. Like, I'm... I'm this this 10 year anniversary makes me feel like i am at some kind of like um some kind of like a turning point a little bit even though really it's just a day and even this celebration again feels like a little self congratulatory and silly like tomorrow or whatever day there's going to be a regular episode and life's going to go on but um it's just making me introspective but um i guess i'm just like you know laying out the ground here that like I love doing this work on this channel, and there's still uh, there's still a motivation for a lot of games that I want to play and like yammer on about. I haven't reached the point where I'm like, well, I don't have anything new to say. You know, I haven't reached that. I guess it's entirely possible, but we're not there yet, thankfully. But like this comic book idea might start happening at some point. Um, I again, I don't know how I will be like in practice, like making it, but like if it happens, I will obviously put like a video announcing it here on the channel with like links on where I will be uploading it. Um, but like that might then affect the situation with the channel, obviously. So please, everybody, be with an open mind, uh, for um, what might happen here or elsewhere that I'm working with some of the all the like creative works I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Man, you know, you want to want one more introspective, like, I also feel shitty, like, just like being like this, me, 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 like, you know, like, it really, like, it doesn't matter that much whether me wrestling with these thoughts and everything, like, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, ultimately, like, but, uh, I'm, I'm told you're supposed to, like, kind of think about the stuff about yourself as kind of a big deal, so I, I don't know, I guess I'm trying, I, maybe this resonates with somebody out there. And this provides help, my ramblings, to somebody else out there. Who knows? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> this is a weird way to end this because we're supposed to be very, like, celebratory here. But again, you know, I, I don't know how to, like, really do that properly. I hope this, like, silly uh, through the years look back was pleasant. And I hope everyone ultimately had a good time watching this. Um, it's been great. Again, no worries. The channel's going to go on under the new name... I, what, but uh, but with the same kind of style and everything, nothing to worry on that front. So in closing, again, thank you to you. You are a huge part of this. No matter you know how long you've been here or how active you've been or everything, uh, it means all in the world to this one random person making these videos that um, I've even found you as an audience. So thanks so much. Stay safe. Have a good time. I'll catch you later. Bye!